Well, in September of 2017, I lost a good friend in a motorcycle accident and things had really started to change, especially at his house. No one was around, it got quiet, and it really shook the community. I mean, he was friends with everybody, everybody knew him. When Alex was living there, there was always noise and people in and out. I hardly ever even seen a deer on the property. This isn't a farm that I never would have even paid attention to. Just being a, a, a 40 acre open section primarily with a house on it, it was just pretty tough moving into the season that year. But since he passed and it's got quiet around the house, the deer have really keyed in on that. And we're going right through his driveway with nobody being there, no vehicles, no commotion. The deer were definitely starting to feel safe on that property. It's starting to get late in the year, uh, December 28th, and guys are in and out of their stands twice a day, putting a lot of pressure on these deer. They're just getting pushed out of the normal food plots. They're being pushed out into these small pockets of cover where, where no one really thinks to go after them. And that's typically what I like to try to do this time of year, is I'll, I'll break off and go to those farms that nobody really thinks about, because a lot of times a good deer can get pushed into the area and be, be living in an isolated pocket. And even though this farm doesn't have a lot of cover, it still has the destination food. I decide that, hey, maybe now's a good time to go out and spend a little time and sit with Alex, just kind of clear my mind and, you know, break off, do something different, think out of the box a little bit and I'm hoping that a big buck will be in one of these pockets and come in here to check it out. It's December 28th, it's actually warmed up a little bit. We got the wind out of the south now. I got in there a little bit late knowing that the deer were gonna move late, just on the account that it had warmed up some. I got set up in this chicken coop. I got all phased up, got my camera gear set up. The wind was right in my face, sun shining in on me, and it was just a perfect spot to sit and, and clear your mind for the afternoon. I've been set up for 20 or 30 minutes at this point. I noticed a few does getting up on the property across the road and starting to mill around a little bit. And just a few minutes later, I, I noticed another deer pop out. You could tell obviously instantly that it's a buck. He looked small in the body. He looked like he could be run down. Uh, you know, post rut like this, it's always hard to tell how old a buck is based on his body size. So I kind of sized him up real quick and you know, it's a nice buck, but I don't think it's anything that I'm really interested in at this point. He starts to dog some does around a little bit and he ends up herding them right to the road and they jump the fence and come right out across the middle of the gravel road. One thing I, I mentioned was, was pressure. It becomes pretty clear as this buck's coming across the road, you can see that there's a truck parked in the fence line behind him. And that's just another prime example. There was someone over there on that farm putting pressure on the farm. That buck felt uncomfortable being there. He decided to come to a farm where he knew there was no pressure, no one had ever hunted there, no one had ever bothered him. He decided I was just gonna walk right across the road, get a bite to eat, mind my own business, no one will bother me. The buck disappears um, in the CRP. He's gone over the hill for a little while. I, I don't know if he's coming my direction, if he's going to a different farm. Five, 10 minutes goes by. And sure enough, I look back out in the field and here comes one of the does. He's, sh he's right behind her, still dogging this doe actively. In my area, the doe density, in my opinion, is extremely high. I feel like these bucks almost never stop rutting. He's real, real thin, you know, so it, again, it's hard to judge him based on his body size because he's still rutting. I mean, we're coming into January and this deer is still actively chasing does, so I know that he's not gonna be in peak physical condition. closing distance, he's 80 yards and closing. I could tell right off he has huge mass. I can see all the kickers and little flame points coming off around his brow tines and I can see the splits. At this point, I'm thinking that, holy cow, maybe I've misjudged this deer. This deer looks incredible at this point and I'm starting to think that this is a buck I'm gonna try to take a shot at. As the buck's closing distance, I can hear tires on the gravel road. The buck instantly comes to full attention. He's looking around. I look out the side window. Sure enough, here comes a truck down the road. The buck is just full statue mode, trying not to move, hoping he doesn't get noticed. And I'm thinking if this guy touches the brakes, it's all over.
thankfully, big sigh of relief, the guy drives off, the buck goes back to relax, starts feeding again, and he's, he's coming at an angle. I'm just waiting for him to get in line where I can take a shot now. you believe that? I think I hit him real good. Whew, big old mule kick. Self-filming, three cameras. And a dilapidated old barn. High pressure deer. Food source that has no pressure on it at all. This farm does not get hunted. It's completely overlooked. It's just a farm section of, of crop with this old building site. And uh, that buck came across the road because he knew he was safe. He came over here to get something to eat. Followed his doe over here. I could not be happier. That's that was my buddy Alex. He's with me tonight. He wanted me to get one. This is his farm. He was killed this summer in a motorcycle accident. That's for him. That, that one's for Alex. That one's for you, buddy. Thank you so much. Well, the keys to success on this hunt was definitely the cold weather. Cold weather moved in about a week ago about 15 degrees when I when I harvested this buck but when it gets cold these deer have to eat they have to hit a food source and uh, I found a food source that had no pressure on it was able to slip in and had a good hide in this old abandoned barn this buck came across a gravel road and uh, through a CRP field and ended up coming into the cornfield to get a bite to eat and I uh, put a great shot on him I just couldn't be happier <laughs>